How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be doing a carb clean on a Briggs & Stratton 725 EXI. So let's get right into it. So I have here a Yardworks and this one has a 725 EXI. So similar to the engine that we worked on in the previous video, but this one has a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more torque. However, the carburetor is virtually identical and on this mower here we have the same issue it won't start so we'll bring it into the shop and we'll tear this thing apart now in the previous video that I did on uh, this design of carburetor I was going to mention that the next time I got one of these engines that needed a carb clean that I would film it and it's kind of funny because I got this literally two days after that video went live so just like before we're going to pull up the little air box cover here and we can have a look at the air filter it's in pretty bad condition guys see that it's filled with oil and we can see some oil here. So what happened was they went to start it, it wouldn't start and they just tried to flip it to, I guess, drain some fuel out of it. But just like the previous video, we're gonna remove the two 5 16 bolts and then the two 9 30 seconds bolts here. And with the air box off, we can have a little better look at the carburetor here. You guys can see all kinds of oil and grass and everything else stuck to the carburetor. So 100% this needs to be cleaned. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and fix the little sticking choke issue. It does plague these engines, but you can see this one for some reason isn't as bad. It's not sticking at all, but I can go ahead and file that down anyways. If you guys haven't watched that video, I'll link it in the top right of your screen as well as down in the description down below. I'd highly recommend watching that video. It's like five minutes just to get an idea of what to do in terms of uh, fixing that issue there. It's just a design flaw in my opinion from Briggs & Stratton, but we're gonna go ahead and remove this carburetor. But to prevent fuel from going everywhere, I have a set of uh, OEM fuel line clamps here. So we're just gonna go under here and clamp it shut. So because I'm gonna be doing a carburetor clean on this, I'm going to be draining and flushing and cleaning out the fuel tank. Now my customer said they put fresh fuel in, but I can never trust that because there could have been bad fuel in the bottom of this fuel tank. So the fuel tank's gonna come off. The first thing we're gonna do here is remove this top shroud. So to do that, there's gonna be two Torx screws and we're gonna lift the back of this up and then we're gonna pull out a little tab that's under here. And I think this is like a T15. Once you get those two torque screws removed, come over here and pull this over your oil dipstick and you're just gonna give it a wiggle and that little clip should pop out of there. Now you may find that you're gonna have to lift up on the front there. Don't worry, you're not gonna break anything. There's just a little plastic tab under there that locks itself under the shroud there. But as long as you have this top plastic piece on an angle, you should be able to just pull it straight back. So there's the little groove that it goes into. And then here's that little tab. I've seen people poke holes in the sticker up top to get access at what they think is a screw, but there is no screw there. It's just a case of that little tab needing to be pressed back. So now that we have the top plastic engine cover removed, we're gonna remove the recoil housing. Three bolts right there, they're 5 16 Remove those, pull this off, and then we can remove our gas tank. So you can just go ahead and lift that up and take that off. And with that removed, that now gives us access at these little tabs here. So that's gonna lift off nice and easy, just like that. Because we have the fuel line clamped, no fuel will come out and we can just go ahead and set that fuel tank off to the side for now. Now you guys don't have to remove all of that if you don't want to, but I normally do because like I said, you're doing a carb clean, you might as well flush the tank and then I can put my fresh gas into it and I'll know that the tank is filled with 100% fresh high octane fuel and there should be no issues with that. Plus it gives us a lot more room to work and it's much easier to remove that fuel line because the fuel line is only a few inches long on this design of engine and it makes bending it and pulling it off a little bit easier when the tank is loose and you can just slide it back. But moving on to the carburetor, this type of carburetor is also press fit. So we're just gonna go ahead and give it a little wiggle here and it will pull off of the plastic intake tube. You guys can see it there. That's the intake manifold and that runs back into the cylinder. So now we have linkages that we have to get off. So what we're gonna do here is simply lift up on this one and then we're gonna rotate the carburetor downwards and we're gonna pull off this choke lever right there and then we'll get our throttle cable next. So you're essentially gonna be rotating the carburetor this way and pulling off the choke lever and then we're gonna rotate it this way and pull off the throttle cable going back to the governor. Now all of this is plastic so you do wanna make sure that you're not going to break anything. So you just wanna have kind of a firm grip on these little plastic levers and then you can just go ahead and 
pop this one out like that and our carburetor is now off. So what I'm gonna do now, because there is fuel in the bowl of this carburetor, I'm gonna drain the remaining fuel into a little jar that I have off to the side, and then I'm gonna go and spray this down with my garden hose in a bucket just to get the majority of all this grass and gunk off of the carburetor so that it's a little cleaner for us to work on when I take it to the workbench. There we go, that's a little better. So it's a little bit cleaner, easier for me to work on now. Now these carburetors are uh, fairly straightforward. There is two screws on the bottom. To remove those, you're gonna go ahead and use a 9 30 second socket. Don't worry about this little center plastic piece. We'll get to that in a minute. Now this carburetor doesn't actually have a bowl gasket like you would normally see. Instead it has an O-ring and you guys can get a little look at it there. So that O-ring goes around the outside of that bowl and it makes a nice tight seal so that fuel doesn't leak out of it. I actually like that about this carburetor. These bowls never seem to leak. So that in my opinion is a great design. Now because they make such a tight seal around the sediment bowl here, what I normally like to do is just come in here with a small flathead slotted screwdriver and just pry up in that little corner there. You don't want to go much because again it is a plastic carburetor and then you could go over to the other side and do that to that side as well. And with the bowl loose we can go ahead and remove it. Now just take note of see this little square here that's raised up so that correlates with our main jet here but on this carburetor this design isn't very great because the location of the main jet. So you'll notice that that main jet is sideways and it's located near the bottom of the bowl of the carburetor. And what that means is it's gonna suck up quite a bit of sediment versus a carburetor that has a main jet way down in the tube and only sucks up fuel when the engine is running. This is always sitting at the bottom of the carburetor and will be prone to get clogged up. Looks to me like there's some crystallized fuel in there. So that could be the main issue. So you guys can have a look here. That's just one of the little pieces that I pulled out of the main jet. So that's just broken down fuel guys. That's all that is. And then what happens is that old fuel crystallizes and it breaks down. And then once it gets wet with fresh fuel, then it kind of gets into like this gelatinous glob and that'll clog up all your jets. Next up, we're gonna remove the float and the needle valve, which I know it seals because this carburetor was not leaking. But what we'll do now is simply slide the float rod over to one side and I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to pop that out. It's just in little tabs that hold that in. So don't worry, you won't break anything. Just pull it right up and the float and the needle valve will come right out. Now, we know that the main jet on this carburetor was clogged, but what you might not know is that there's actually a distribution tube that's underneath this and it's part of this whole white plastic assembly here. There's these little indentations and they're gonna be on both sides of the black plastic. So that's what helps keep this main jet distribution tube assembly in place. So like I said, a small slotted screwdriver, you just push it in between the white and the black plastic there and then we're just gonna pry that out. Now I normally like to go right in this spot here because that white plastic piece holds itself right in there so that's the center of that plastic assembly and that's the strongest part of it. So I like to go as close to that little tab as possible. But if you get it right, you should be able to just pry it up just like that. Now when you do that, you may end up damaging this little black O-ring that goes around to make it the seal. You can replace that though and I will put a part number in the bottom right of your screen as well as in the description down below so you can replace that. But this is the main jet assembly and your distribution tube here. So we can see that there's another port that's also small and is prone to clogging as well. But that's pretty much it guys. So what we're gonna do here is, because I have an ultrasonic cleaner, I'm gonna put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. It is the superior way to clean any carburetor parts, but you can use a little bit of carb cleaner. So take your carb cleaner and spray it into that port there, spray it down the middle port, spray it into that one as well. If you have a compressor, I would highly recommend blowing this out with a compressor, put it to like 60 PSI, and that should be good to flush all of the gunk out of this main jet distribution tube assembly here. As far as the rest of the carburetor, that's pretty much it. There's gonna be your fuel main inlet right there, and then there's going to be your air inlet for your pilot jet circuit. And you can take your carb cleaner as well as your compressor and just blow that hole out. And then there's gonna be a couple holes down at the bottom of this assembly as well that you can blow out with a compressor or carb cleaner. And just to briefly explain what that is, it's simply a carb bowl drain plug. So. What you're gonna need is like a 3 8 
hex and then you go in here and you can put that on a ratchet and it simply just threads out about a quarter of a turn and then that will pop right out. We can see that there is a little bit of gunk built up in the little corner there. So I will pop that out and then we'll go ahead and clean that. And like I said, you're gonna get approximately a quarter of a turn on that and then it should lift right out. We can see that there is definitely some gunk built up in there. So this carburetor had some old gas in it and that's why I'm glad I always choose to drain out the fuel tank because you never know what customers have in their fuel tanks. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this carburetor as well as all of its components into my ultrasonic cleaner here and then I'll bring you guys back for reassembly. So I'm just draining the fuel out into my old fuel jerry can here and you guys are gonna notice I have a little 90 degree shutoff valve with an extra fuel line coming down. It makes draining tanks with short fuel lines much simpler so you just plug the 90 degree fuel shutoff valve into the main fuel line and then you can have a nice long line going into a jerry can. So I've drained that out and I'm just gonna use some spray nine and I'll wash this out in a bucket and then basically I just rinse this out with water until I can't see any more bubbles from the spray nine. Now once you get your fuel tank clean, even though I know I don't have a blockage in my fuel line or the screen pickup in my fuel tank, I would recommend taking a compressor and blowing out that fuel line just to make sure you don't have a blockage. And then I can just let that fuel tank air dry while I finish up the carburetor. Now, if you guys don't have an ultrasonic cleaner and maybe you don't have some carb cleaner either, you could probably just get this carburetor clean using a garden hose and some soap or maybe some spray nine. But because I use a fairly concentrated ultrasonic cleaning solution, I don't want it to harm the plastic. So as soon as I've pulled it out of my ultrasonic cleaner, I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse it off with some fresh water from the garden hose. Okay, so now that my carburetor is rinsed off, I've blown off with my compressor. I'm going to go ahead and take the distribution tube white assembly here and we're going to pop that back into the carburetor. Before I do that I'm going to take a little bit of 3-in-1 oil and I'm just going to put that around the o-ring there so that I don't have to worry about tearing that o-ring. Just a little bit to lubricate that o-ring there and then we're going to go ahead and put the main jet facing that way when the fuel inlet is on your right. And then just go ahead and press down on that until you hear it snap into position. And then you just want to make sure that you're flush and that will let you know that you're all the way in. Next up, we'll take our float needle valve and float rod and we'll just go ahead and pop that into those little tabs there. Then what you want to do here is just go ahead and take your thumb and press down firmly until you hear that snap into position. And just to make sure that this carburetor seals up and it won't leak, I've hooked up my carburetor pressure tester here and we can see that we're holding at approximately five PSI and it's not dropping, which means that this carburetor seals up and we're now ready to reinstall the sediment bowl. And like I mentioned before, you're gonna have this little raised up piece and that correlates to the main jet there. So you're just gonna install it just like that. But before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and take some three in one oil and we're gonna put it onto this bowl O-ring here just to make sure that that doesn't pinch and rip. Once again, you don't need very much. Just a little bit will just help it slide in. So we're gonna line up that little groove there and then we're gonna go ahead and just press this into position. And once you get the carburetor bowl pushed in, go ahead and tighten up your screws. You don't have to worry about getting those too tight. Again, this is a plastic carburetor, so things can strip easily if you over tighten those screws. But this carburetor, because like I said, it has that outside O-ring, it actually makes a tight seal on its own. So the screws here are more so just to hold the bowl from popping out, I guess, instead of actually making the seal because it's the O-ring that makes that tight seal. So now we'll go ahead and and set that down and I've taken a little bit of 3-in-1 oil and put it over the bowl drain plug. We'll go ahead and pop that in and then we could go ahead and take our hex drive here and tighten that up and it'll go about a quarter of a turn downwards and lock itself into position. Now on this design carburetor, similar to the older style plastic Briggs carburetors, you're gonna have a white plastic clip and then you're gonna have a black O-ring on the inside of that. If you guys pull off your carburetor and you notice that you don't have either of those, look on your plastic intake manifold and they should be there. And it's quite simple, they just pop into position just like that. But what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of three in one oil on that O-ring. Now this engine's starting to get fairly dirty as you can see. I've taken some Gorilla Tape here and put it over the intake manifold. What I'm gonna do is also probably plug the crankcase breather tube as well. I'm gonna take some spray nine over top of this engine block here and I'm just gonna wash this off with a garden hose
those with the nozzle on jet to kind of blast away some of this crud here before we reinstall our carburetor. So a little bit of spray nine, matched with our garden hose here. It'll just clean up that engine block nicely. Okay, so with the engine cleaned off as best as I could get it with the garden hose and some spray nine, I didn't power wash this thing. There was really no need to. We're now ready to reinstall my carburetor here. And like I said, I did go ahead and grind off a little bit of that choke lever there. You guys can see, so that should never seize in place. But the first thing we're gonna do is hook up the throttle lever. Now, this crankcase breather tube here is gonna have to go above this throttle lever, but First thing we're gonna do is hook up the throttle lever first. So we're gonna go in like this and then like that. And then we'll bend back and hook up our choke lever and then go ahead and push fit onto our intake manifold right there. So once again, very simple. And then also the choke one right there. We'll go ahead and pull up on little crankcase breather tube. And then here's where you're gonna wanna line these little tabs up with the slot in that bracket there. This side just has a single one that just kinda, uh, I guess, is just a backing plate for this bracket over here. And the three-in-one oil should help it slide on here, but it's just a push fit. So you just wanna get that nice and snug. Simple as that, make sure that your tabs are lined up in that groove, which we can see they are. And like I said, I just went ahead and ground off. You guys can see not only on the flat side, but also on the corner piece as well. So I tried to take it off on a 45 and that just gives me a little guarantee that it won't cause any issues down the road. It's such a simple fix guys. Like I said, I did that in my video last week and I was gonna mention that if I ever worked on another one of these engines that I would do a carb clean and show you guys and it just so happened that I got one in I think two days later. So I'm doing this for you guys and it is a nice cool little follow up. So that's it pretty much for the carburetor. We're now ready to pop our fuel tank back onto the little tabs there and we'll go ahead and reconnect our fuel line. So the fuel tank is now seated into the slots on the engine. I've reconnected our fuel line as well as our fuel line clamp. Didn't need to replace that line because it's a fairly new engine, fairly new fuel line. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take the three 5 16 screws and we'll get the recoil installed. And now that that's reinstalled, we can go ahead and get our little plastic engine cover back on. And then to seat that little clip, you're gonna push down on it. And then I like to give it a little smack like this. And then that normally just seats it into position. And then just go ahead and make sure you're flush and that nothing wobbles at the back. And you can go ahead and get your two torque screws in. So now I'm ready to reinstall my airbox backing plate here, hook up our crankcase breather tube, and then I'll get this bolted on. So now that our air filter backing plate is installed, I'll put a approximately maybe half a liter of fresh fuel in here and we'll take this thing outside fire it up and see how it runs okay so i got the machine outside right ready to fire this thing up i got a quick clamp on my lever there just going to go ahead and give it a pull sounds pretty good gone ahead and taken out the oil using my pellet oil extractor there. If you guys want to know what oil capacity your engine takes, just pull it up on Google. Type in 725 EXI oil capacity. We're going to be using SAE30 or a 10W30 oil. I'll probably clean out the bottom side of the deck as well as sharpen the blade. It doesn't need a spark plug because this thing fired up first pull, so I'm probably just going to throw a new air filter on it, and I will link a part number in the bottom right of your screen for that air filter, as well as put that information in the description down below. This engine runs and my customers should be happy to get it back. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get that carburetor cleaned up. I changed the oil. I did use 18 ounces of 10W30 on that engine. Briggs & Stratton says that those engines can be anywhere from 15 to 18 ounces. So I guess it all depends on whether it's a 550 EXI, which is a five and a half horsepower, a 675 or a 725. So I believe that the 725 series takes a little bit more oil than the 550 series. But that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You guys can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>